fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video we're going to be looking at dialing in with a Sage Barista Pro. If you have the Sage Barista Express, this video should work for you too. The first step I go into certainly will. The only difference is that you won't quite have the same fine grinding ability with the Barista Express as the Barista Pro because the Pro has 30 settings and the Express has 18. This is intended for anyone using the standard single walled baskets, by the way. If you're gonna be using the pressurized dual wall baskets, which also come with these machines, ignore this video. You don't need to dial in, not in the way you would with standard baskets. There are loads of good videos on dialing in, but dialing in with these integrated grinder machines from Sage or Breville is slightly different. In particular, when it comes to the initial step that I'm gonna get into first. So the first thing we need to do with these machines is to find the choking point and adjust this to grind size one. With the Brister Express and Brister Pro, we have internal grind adjustment on the burrs as well as the external adjustment via the dial. They come factory set to the inner setting of six, but what I find is that at this setting, I'm not quite at choking point at grind size one, the finest setting. And that means that you don't have much range down at the finer side of things. So if we change the internal grind settings just slightly so that we're close to choking the machine at grind size one, we're then set up for grinding finer for espresso with standard baskets. And by the way, you don't need to do this if you have the Smart Grinder Pro. The Smart Grinder Pro has a bigger range and the adjustment on them only really needs to be tweaked over time as the burrs wear. On the Barista machines though, I find that for use with standard baskets, they benefit from being dropped usually just one notch finer. We need to make sure we're doing this right though. So for this first step, you need to purge at least one full basket of coffee. And by purge, I mean grind it and then chuck it away. I know it's wasteful, but if you don't purge coffee when you're dialing in, not all of the coffee in the basket is gonna be at the same grind size. This is due to something called exchanged retention, which means the grinds which are retained each time you grind and then end up in your basket the next time you grind. You can get a single doser attachment for these machines with bellows, and I've ordered some, but they've not come yet. These greatly reduce the retention and do away with the need to purge. But I don't have one of these at the moment, so I'm purging. So this is something you're gonna see me doing when I'm adjusting the grind size. Every time I do that, I'll be purging some coffee and half a basket should be fine. I'm recommending purging at least one full basket now because it's important that we're in sync with the current grind adjustment at the starting point. If you don't purge now and you were at a more coarse setting earlier, you may end up setting your grinder finer than you need to. So make sure you have enough of the same coffee beans for this and change your external grind setting to one and grind at least a full basket of coffee and chuck it away. And then pull a shot, or grind again, pull a shot. And what we're aiming at is at least severe over extraction, if not completely choking the machine, meaning hardly anything comes out. I'd recommend doing this with a similar roast profile to that which you're mainly going to be using if you favour a particular roast profile. For example, if you're usually going to be doing or using dark roasted beans, do this initial step with dark roasted beans. If you're usually using medium roast, do this with a medium roast. And when it comes to pulling the shot, first I'd recommend resetting the double shot button to its maximum time and then just press the double shot button to start and then press it again to stop. You can pull the shot manually too if you're okay with that. If not, let's just keep it simple to begin with and make sure the double shot button is set for more than we need. Then press the button to start it and then press it again to stop. And make sure it's a double shot with a two cup basket, the two cup single wall standard basket and grind about 20 grams or just over and then tamp. Use a razor tool so you know you have the right dose and then pull the shot. If you don't have scales, I'd recommend you get hold of some and click here for my review of these the Time Warp Black Mirror scales. But in the meantime, just set the timer to around 18 or 19 seconds. Make sure you're grinding enough so that when you trim with the razor tool, the razor is taking a bit off the surface. The reason for this is that dosing is really important for dialing in. 
And if you trim it with the razor tool, you're always gonna have the right dose in terms of headspace between the coffee and the shower screen. So most people here are probably gonna find that at one, on the external grind setting, it's either slightly over extracting or slightly under extracting. If this is the case, then you need to follow this next step to adjust the internal burr settings. If this isn't the case, however, and when you grind at grind size one, you're just getting a few drops of espresso or a tiny trickle. In other words, it's already choking or severely over extracting at grind size one. You don't need to do anything. So if you do need to adjust it, it's very simple. Just click here for the last video I uploaded, which shows how to do this. All you do is take out the top burr, move the hopper first, obviously, remove the wire, move the top ring down one step so that instead of the red dot being above six, it's now above five. Put it back in, put the hopper back on, purge another basket of coffee and pull another shot. But you should find that going one notch finer does the trick. If not, try again and drop it another notch finer. But to be on the safe side, if not much seems to have happened, just try one more shot without changing anything, just in case you're still seeing some retention. Don't go overboard, by the way, and take it down loads because you'll end up with the burrs clashing together, which isn't good. So you now have your machine set up for grinding for espresso with standard baskets. So let's talk about dialing in. One thing to keep in mind when dialing in is replication. We want to replicate absolutely everything from one shot to the next, except for the one thing we're changing, which for the most part is going to be grind size. So we want to go for the same recipe, same ratio, same tamp technique and pressure, same everything. And I'd highly recommend using the razor tool every time. I've seen some people saying you don't need to use this, but I disagree. What this does is ensures the same gap between the top of the coffee and the shower screen. And the manufacturer has made this so that it gives a perfect headspace. It also ensures a level surface if you've tamped slightly off. The razor tool can't ensure the grind size is correct, but it can ensure the headspace is correct. And then you keep adjusting the grind until it's right. We know the grind is right when we get the ratio we're after in the desired shot time and when it tastes balanced. About the recipe and ratio, by the way, these baskets are made for around 19 grams of coffee when you dial in. So as I've said, I'd usually aim to grind just over 20 grams, then tamp, then trim. The ratio I go for is one to two. So for 19 grams of coffee, I'm looking for 38 grams of espresso. You don't have to do this. You can go for one to 2.5 or one to three, whatever you like, but whatever you go for, I'd just stick to one ratio for now. You can always try tweaking the ratio later. In the shot time, I'd always go for a range of between 28 to 32 seconds. I'd recommend just aiming to get into the ballpark and to be consistently doing that before you start trying to do things like playing around with the ratio or even changing the brew temperature. You can change the shot temperature on these machines and that gives you another tool when dialing in, but let's keep it as simple as possible. Just leave the brew temperature alone for now until you've nailed dialing in. And then in the future, if you find you need to adjust the brew temperature, you can. The same goes with pre-infusion time. You can change that. You can do it manually and pre-infuse for less time or for longer, but I'd recommend ignoring pre-infusion for now. Just let the machine deliver its pre-programmed pre-infusion. To talk about taste, I'd highly recommend tasting all your shots to give you an idea of what under over and balanced extraction should taste like. Under extracted is usually sour, over is usually bitter, and the better dial than you are, the more sweet and well balanced the shot should be. The other thing to mention is distribution. I've mentioned in other videos that there are a few different distribution methods you can use, and I prefer the WDT, the Vice Distribution Technique. I've got this tool, which is a mechanical keycap puller for a fiver, which I've just snipped the ends off and I'll put a link in the description below to this. You can buy tools made for this or you can get a cork and stick a few needles in it. You just want a few long, thin, pointy things. I'm just using this 3D printed dosing funnel I bought from Etsy and I'll put a link in the description to this. And this saves coffee going everywhere when I'm grinding and it stops coffee going everywhere when I'm doing the DWT as well. All you do is go around in concentric circles, going right down to the bottom of the basket, raking up the clumps, evenly distributing everything, and then rake the surface and you distribute it. But I'll demonstrate that shortly. 
This is mainly to try to avoid channeling, which is what happens when the water finds its path of least resistance through the coffee, which leads to an uneven extraction. If you think you're dialed in, but it just tastes wrong, that's probably channeling at work. Channeling is a pain in the butt. So I'll stop waffling now and I'll start dialing in. Okay, so we've changed the internal grind setting to five from the factory preset six. We've changed the external grind setting to one, and I'm hoping to choke the machine to find that choking point at grind size one. So hopefully we've adjusted it now so that at grind size one, virtually no espresso comes through. And as you can see, mission accomplished. I don't fancy drinking that, do you? I'm going to change it to grind size 11. I was going for 10, but I missed the end up at 11, but close enough. Let's see where we're at with that. And we're just going to purge. Get rid of the retention, the exchange retention. Make sure everything in the basket is at the same grind size. Do the DWT, Vice Distribution Technique. Give it a tamp. Trim with the razor tool. Let's see where we're at with this grind size, grind size 11. As you can see, it's flowing too fast, so we're too coarse, so we need to go finer. And that was 17 seconds, and that was over one to two extraction. Looks okay, and actually tasted okay as well, a bit sour, but not as bad as I'd expect running that fast. Trying at grind size eight now, and I'm just flapping the hopper lid there to act like a bellows to try and reduce the exchange retention, reduce the amount of purging I need to do. Just purged half a basket. It does work to a certain degree, that. So this is at grind size eight now. See if we're any better dialed in. It's definitely better, but it's still a bit quick. Still a bit too coarse. That shot time was 22 seconds. So I'm going down to grinding size six now. Let's see what we get with that. Purging again. And this, by the way, is with the cranberry and toffee blend from my coffee website, cworks.co.uk, if you were wondering. See what we get at grind size six. And there you go, that's looking much more like it. And I think we're dialed in. That was a shot time of 28 seconds. And I could tweak it, I could go a little bit finer, I could play with the brew temperature, I could play with the pre-infusion time, but Overall, not bad. That's fairly well dialed in, I think. I'm just going to do another shot now. Same grind size, same everything. Let's just check that we're dialed in. And there we go. Same again. Looks good. 
So there you go, that's how to dial in with the Sage or Breville Barista Pro. And as I said earlier, it should serve as a guide for the Barista Express too. It's just that you don't have quite as many grind settings on the Express. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And please click the like button. Thank you very much. It's not just vanity that really helps videos to perform better. And don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to our channel and to become an accredited Coffee Botherer, also known as Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog Tatty bye.